Indonesia, with its various cultural and social aspects that influence its own people's lifestyle and inspire others beyond its borders. With 17,000 islands, 300 languages, and 200 tribes, Indonesia has many to offer, from large historical landmarks to lesser-known hidden gems. And as students of the University of Sriwijaya, we are presenting to you one of Indonesia's greatest and proudest achievements in Muslim culture, the Akuran Al-Akbar. Located in province of South Sumatra, Palembang City in the Gandus district, Akran Al-Akbar has become the world's largest Akran to be crafted, or in this case, built. As we first arrived at Akran Al-Akbar, we saw various buildings like a school, mosque, deep shop, and food court, as well as a tower that is topped with a globe and an Akran on top of it. But for today, we will be focusing on the main tour building. In order for us to enter the building, you must buy the tickets first, which is which costs twenty thousand rupees per person, which is equivalent to one dollar thirty-six cents or one hundred forty-four yen. As we go up the stairs to the building, our temperatures will check as protocol for health and safety reasons. From here, we saw our first example, one of the giant carvings of the Quran. Larger than men, this gave us the first look of what we will be looking for today. But even that didn't prepare us for what is presented at the end of the hall. As we walked down the hall, passing through several local and traditional Sumatran antiques, we entered the first chamber. An entire chamber filled with large wood carvings and holy verses of the Quran, placed beside and on top of each other covering the entire chamber's wall. We then move on to a platform overlooking an even more massive chamber as the speaker plays verses and Quran for the visitors. The platform we were on acted as a break area and a little cafe where visitors can relax, look at the scenery, as well as order Al-Quran Akbar's own brand of coffee and souvenirs, which range in price between 10,000 rupees to 75,000 rupees. Sadly for us, when we came, the one in charge of the cafe was currently on a holiday. So we can't order any coffee freshly poured, but we can still buy the coffee powder to make it ourselves at home. We then went down to the lower floor, where we entered the gift shop, in which we have to pass through in order to go to the last chamber. The gift shop sells various products, be it local or Muslim items, but most notably the many, many Muslim clothings, available for men women and children, but mostly women here. We then exit the gift shop and enter the last chamber. A larger chamber with larger wood carvings standing tall from encircling the chamber. In this chamber, we notice a large glass and cement container light up by lights from the inside. This is the Akura Al Akbar's money box. Larger than the man itself, this is where the visitors can download the small amounts they can spare for the Al-Quran al -Aqbar. This is This is also where we saw a photo of the man who led the project of building this massive structure, Haji Sawatila Muzayib, in which next to it is the plaque with the signature of the then acting president of Indonesia, Susilo Bambang Yudhoyono, to announce officially the completion of the Al-Quran al -Aqbar. The large columns and rows of wood carvings facing the platform where we were previously on can be flipped open to reveal another room within, with even more wood carvings acting like a walk-in gallery. With all this magnificent craftsmanship, we were curious of how this magnificent and massive structure came to be. So then, we interviewed our own tour guide of the day, Mr. Sarkoni to give us more information behind the history and the making of this massive structure. Jadi, jadi, 
Right then, the name is Sarkoni. I work as one of the tour guides and caretakers of the Alquran Al Akbar. The making of the Al-Quran started from 2002 to 2011, while the construction of the building started around 2011. Well, the making of one of the carvings took around 2 to 3 months to make. What was the process? Well, it went through a lot, be it the writing, the molding, the crafting, the carving, the painting, and the polishing. This is led by Haji Sawatila himself with his fellow lecturers, as well as a team of craftsmen. Now picture this. Haji Sawatila writes down the verses on a piece of cotton. Then it would be pressed onto an oil paper or onion skin. And then would be rechecked, reread, and reinterpreted. If the writing was right, then it would be molded onto the plank by the team, then carved, then polished, then beaten. Painted on. Well, as you can see, we only have two chambers to hold the carvings. But Haji Sawatila plans to build around 10 to 12 floors to hold three chapters each. And maybe the rest of the floors could be used as a food court, gift shop, or even an office center for the Akran Al Akbar. But this is just so far a concept. As for the realization, who knows? But the important thing is that we first have to pray and set the goal in mind. That's the important part. Yeah. Well, the impact towards Gandus and its people is considerably amazing. To be honest, back then, Gandus was just an average landmass without anything to be proud of. If you came here by car and rolled down the windows, inshallah, it would smell like rubber. This is the reason why Haji Sarawatila didn't want it to be built in the middle of the city, and had this place built in Gandus itself. Because when the Al Quran Al Akbar was built, many people from around the world came and visit Gandus. People from Singapore, Borneo, Australia, Africa, and especially people from Malaysia. Business here became more profitable, and Gandhis received more and more visitors each year, and became a lot more remembered. As Muslims, we should really be proud of ourselves, because not only fellow Muslims came here to visit, but also other people from other religions came here to visit just to see the Akbar and Allah Akbar. Thank you for Mr. Sarkoni for participating and answering our various questions. As a student studying in culture and social science in Sumatra Selatan, it's good to know that a cultural marvel is nearby. Places like this should be appreciated and preserved by the people, so it will last for times to come and for other people to remember it. Thank you for watching, and we hope you come and visit sites like this. Goodbye to all.